<clears throat> All right, you guys with me? I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, okay, so today all I have planned really is to get, um, give you guys an intro to ladder diagrams. Do you guys have any experience with ladder diagrams? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Um, a lot of it becomes practice once you get the basic principles of it, but um, the key to a, a couple things to remember about ladder diagrams. One is how they're read is like a book, top to bottom, left to right. I always okay. tell people to think about things in terms of current flow when it comes to physical, um, electromechanical ladder diagrams. When you guys get into PLCs, those ladder diagrams are going to be a little, that ladder logic is a little bit different. But when it comes to actual physical components like these, um, think about it in terms of current flow. So each horizontal line is called a rung. So this would be rung, rung zero or rung one, rung two, and so on and so forth. What I mean about in terms of current flow is if this ladder diagram is line one and line two is 120 volts difference of potential. So you'd have plus 120 and then a neutral. Um, okay. Right now, can current flow from left to right? Yes. Can it? Because it looks like this is open, right? 
Yeah. TV one. Can you see my cursor? Yeah. Okay. Push button one is open right now. So this is a normally open push button. We'll get into um, uh, the schematics of different components, I think in maybe chapter two. Um, but right now current can't flow. So you got a difference of potential of 120 volts between line one and two. But current can't flow through this because this is open. If you push this push button in, um, for this normally open push button, that action would be like pushing it down. I think about putting your finger on top of this um, little point right here and pushing it down. It's a momentary contact, which means as I push it down, it will make contact closing these two points and make the light energize. Um, momentary means that if I let it go, then it will um, it will spring back into an open state. That's what momentary means. Um, I'll just show you real quick. I can here. Okay. So. Bear with my paint drawing skills are not that good. But if I push that push button down, what happens is it closes those contacts, right? Yeah. So this symbol is normally open symbol. This symbol is normally open held closed. So anytime you see this on a ladder diagram, that means normally open. You guys have probably seen this before. But normally open and normally closed are two very common um, terms when talking about con components. So if these two are both normally open, what would normally closed look like, do you think? Since the action of these are always down. Normally on the opposite. Yeah, normally closed would be on the bottom side of these contacts, touching them. Right, so if I push down on these, this, it would open up. See that? Yep. And this is a momentary. Op this is a momentary, normally closed push button. Uh, normally closed, um, held open would look like this. So what you would always see on a ladder diagram is something with its de-energized state. So if you ever saw this on a ladder diagram, it would have to say on there, this is held open, but that's what it would look like. So seeing something like this on a ladder diagram is not very common, but knowing that normally closed is on the bottom side of these contacts because the action is down um, is important. And you will see both on in your labs. Um, so if those are momentary, what do you think a norm or a, um, I guess I guess we'd call it toggle. So if these are normally open, what would a toggle switch look like? You guys have, you guys know you've seen it before. Like a lever? Yeah. Right. So this is just a single pole switch. Right now it's in an open position. If you saw it on a ladder in a closed position, <laughs> this is crap you drawing just making contact. I mean, you get the idea, right? Yeah. Oh, this would be an open single pole switch and this would be a closed single pole switch. And those are not momentary because if I close them, just like a light switch, right? If I turn the lights on, if I turn the lights on, this is what's happening, right? If I turn the lights off, this is what's happening on a single pole switch. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Get all my crap out of the way here.
Okay, so what I have, and I have to go through all my ladder diagrams and just to show you what three phase would look like for these. Um, and I will tell you how the three phase stuff works, but um, this is what we would use in the lab on those physical trainers. Um, I have to take these and modify them to fit our single phase and our 24 volt setup. Today, what I'm gonna go through with you guys is um, just these basic components, push buttons and um, pilot lights. And then we'll hook up our, uh, our trainers together to do, I lost it. Yeah. To do this setup. Um, so let's look at some push buttons and pilot lights first. So this is a pretty uh, common setup for a, um, a push button that you would see like an industry. Um, this one's made by Alan Bradley and this is called NEMA and we'll get into NEMA versus IEC later. Um, but the action of this thing can be either normally open or normally closed. If you turn this thing on the side, what I like about Alan Bradley and these NEMA devices is these contacts you can you can actually replace them if something goes bad. They're meant to handle um, higher amounts of current. They're kind of heavy duty switches. But these two sets of contacts are related and these two contacts are related. So this is one set and this is another set. This would be set B and this would be set A. Can you guys, can you guys read that? Yeah, there's a little bit of a lag, but yeah, we can see it. Okay. So watch what happens when I push this button in. You see the little plunger go downward as I push the button in? Yeah. And then behind this screw and behind, well, I guess it's underneath this screw. You see that little contact that's going up and down? Okay. So there's a spring in there that's holding this thing in, in this state. So this would be the de-energized state. And then when I push it, it goes down and makes contacts between these two. So do you think that these two contacts, the set A contacts are normally open or normally closed? Open. They're normally open, right? Right. So if I had wires hooked up to these and I'll do this in a minute, um, if I had wires hooked up to those right now, they would be open. And then when I push the button down, those contacts make, and these two become electrically continuous. Set B, those are normally closed because right now those, the contacts for those are made, right? But these set B, they'd be closed. And then if I push the button, they become open. So that could be like a stop push button, right? You'd want it to de-energize when I push the button. But anyway, just to show you how that works, I got the old meter here. And I'll put it on uh, continuity. Beeps. All 
right, so there's a nor there's a normally open. I should really put wires in these. You can see when that plunger goes down, it makes. And for some reason, I wasn't getting a tone on this one. I don't know if the contact's bad or what. These contacts are actually not making the B set. They're not making, I'm assuming that's because this would be mounted to a pilot light that would energize the pilot light when it's, when it's closed. Um, and that'll make more sense in a minute, but at least you can see that set A, how that plunger comes down and makes contact. So that's what we're gonna be doing in our little lab today. Um, but that's, that's a push button. Um, then we have pilot lights. Pretty obvious on your trainer what where the pilot lights are. Yours are LED, um, but they can come in LED or the older style is incandescent. Um, this one tells you what the voltage is, uh, what the lamp number is. What I really like about these NEMA pilot lights is they also you can take these things apart and replace components if they become bad. Whereas your LED 24 volt pilot lights, if those go bad, you're kind of screwed. You just have to replace the whole thing, right? So anyway, all of these 120 volt incandescent pilot lights, you can replace the lamp. Um, and this guy just pops out like that. And same setup when mounting this thing. It's a smaller diameter hole. I think this one will mount with a little half inch hole saw, but this is basically your lock nut. You take that off, put it through the hole in the box and cinch it back down. Um, I have some pilot lights mounted on the the trainer that I built to show you guys in class. And, and I, I have that thing built to show you guys how these actual components that you'd see in the field like this, these bigger heavy duty components would, would work and operate. Um, but all three of the pilot lights that I had mounted are not working. So I got to go through and work on those and fix them. But anyway, we'll do that at some point. But this is just this is just a pilot light. Its whole job is you put 120 volts on these lugs, it'll make the light turn on. Pretty simple, right? Also have pilot lights that are also buttons. Okay, so you could have this light turn on all the time, just showing you, hey, this 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 button is on working, whatever, or you could use it as a pilot light. Um, you could use this component basically for both of these components on your ladder, right? So you could knock both of these out with one component. Does that make sense? So for the push button part, I would land those two wires on set um, A, and for the pilot light part, I would land those two wires here. And this, the pilot light part on this says 120 volt, 50 or 60 hertz. So that's the other part that I forgot to mention earlier. When, when reading ladder diagrams, I told you to, le to read it top to bottom, left to right. Think about it in terms of current flow. But when you look at these things, um, this is meant to show you how 
everything is working electrically. This doesn't show you where these components are at, right? Yeah. So this little wire right here between push button one and the pilot light could be nothing but a little jumper on this component, right? Or this could be a push button. Uh, let's say we're down at Caterpillar in one of their buildings. This could be a push button in one building. This could be a pilot light that's 500 feet away. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you're looking at these things, don't, don't get too wrapped up on, well, the push button must be right next to the pilot light or the push button and the pilot light might be the same component. It could be very different. And that'll become more um, important in the fall when you guys take troubleshooting, Black Tech 151. Because you're going to look at these diagrams knowing how, how they work and you're going to go through and trace out these ladders and see where the problem is. But just something else to keep in mind that um, the way this thing looks on the ladder is not necessarily how it looks in the field. It's just how it is electrically working. What makes these things electrically continuous. All right. This is the same thing. It's a push button action. And you can see that plunger moving up and down. And this one actually is normally closed, push it, and it becomes open. And this one is normally open, push it, and that plunger closes the contacts. Um, and then same thing here. It's got a little lamp in here that you can replace. So those are push buttons and lamps, pilot lights. What I've got for you guys to use for normally uh, open push buttons are in your little kit here. There should be some little micro switches. With the little colors. These are the little micro switches. We're going to plug these into our proto board. Hopefully. And what you want to do is plug them in um, across this little channel. You understand how these proto boards work, right? Each row of five are connected, right? So it wouldn't do you much good to mount this thing all in the same row. You know what I'm saying? So you want to put this thing on and jumper across this little channel in the middle. And then if we take a little, a couple little wires here. I'm gonna get some red. Hey, Tyler's back. Yeah. Little technical difficulties, you know. I'm a, I'm a technician, so I fixed it. You know. Yeah. Good. Uh, so what we're doing is for our for our push buttons for the sake of our labs and your 24 volt trainers, we're going to use in your little kit here these little micro switches. Right now, we're just going to test out um, this uh, this ladder diagram using. I guess I should just do it on my actual trainer. Zoom in if need to. All right, so I'm going to mount this thing and make sure, Tyler, when you put it in there, that you jump her across this little channel in the middle, because it wouldn't be it wouldn't be any good to mount this switch in the same row of five because they're all connected anyway. You know what I mean? Okay, so now what? We got a switch. We got some pilot lights right here. I don't care which color we use. Um, but where would, on the ladder diagram, where would F9 be? What is F9? What does that represent? 
I know we haven't gotten into symbols yet. But what do you think F stands for? Fuse. Fuse. Go on your trainer. That's going to be right here. Right? And we don't have to wire that up. On the we well, I guess we've are we've already wired that up, right? So we've got 24 volts going from this transformer is going to be our power supply. So we've got 24 volts here already. So we've got plus and minus, right? So line one line one is going to be plus, line two is going to be minus. So basically, what we have to do is we have to get plus 24 volts to one side of this push button. So that'd be our first wire. That's where I'm starting. If I'm wiring this thing up, I'm going like reading it like a book. I'm going to go top to bottom, left to right. So where do you think we need to take um, a wire from? One of the red terminals into the proto board. Right, we've got plus 24 here. We need to go to that push button. So where, I, where I'm gonna take it is one side of this switch. gauge wire doesn't really fit in the proto board the best. Can you make it work? I'll find out. In there? Okay. All right, I got some 18 gauge here. Pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah, it's a. I just split half of the stranded off, so it'll work. Oh, that sucks. There, I give you guys a bunch of wire, and it doesn't even freaking work. wasn't stranded would probably work. Okay. So Tyler, did you catch that? How to make that wire fit into the proto board? Yep. All right. That sucks. What I get for trying to be a hero and giving you guys a whole bunch of wire to use on these labs and only freaking fit in the proto board. Anyway. All right, so basically that wire that we just put in was right here. What I always tell people when they're doing a ladder diagram, if you guys can print these things off or if you can pull them up, um, save them and open them up in Microsoft Paint like I'm doing or whatever. Um, when I'm going through and wiring these up, I hook up one wire and then I do this. So I've got from, from fuse nine to push button one is done, right? Now I need to put this wire in, right? Yep. So 
So from the other side of the push button up to uh, which color light do you want to use? Red. Red? Yeah. So now on my ladder, I've done that and I've done that. What about the negative side of the light back up to the power supply? Do we need to do that? Huh? What? Let me look a second. Nope, we're good. We don't have to, right? If you look at this red light, you remember how we hooked it up yesterday? We took a black wire from these lights that are all jumpered together, the negative side. We took a black wire over to this terminal strip. So here's mine and it's already made up to the power supply. So this one's going to the power supply, right? So that side's already done. So I can go like, bloop, bloop. and now I know that I'm good. So before I plug mine in, I'm gonna pull this fuse out and I'm gonna actually check um, voltage coming in, going over here, and I'm going to check it. Um, I guess I'll just check the line in the load side of the power supply to make sure my voltage is good. Just a good idea to do that. Um, so to kill power to the whole trainer, I could pull this fuse out, right? That's going to open up on your ladder diagram this, right? I pull that fuse out that opens up, but it doesn't kill power to, to here. Just keep that in mind. Once you plug this bad boy in, you're going to have 120 volts here all the time until you unplug it. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to find an extension cord and go ahead and plug mine in. So I've got mine plugged in. Check AC voltage on the line side and should have nothing. Anything. 
right. check the extension cord. Oh, plug the plug the trainer behind it in. I'm an idiot. Okay, when you plug it in, did your little uh, LED light turn on? Yeah, no? Hold on, I'm getting it plugged in. Oh. All right, so when you plug it, I'm getting 120 volts now. There's a little LED light on the front of the power supply that says DC is okay. You can actually adjust yep. the output voltage a little bit on here by using this little screw. But right now, I'm just going to check my DC voltage on the load side. Twenty-four point one seven volts. Pretty darn. All right. What's the? What's up? My red pilot light is staying on. Say what? Yeah. So you obviously don't have your fuse put pulled out. Yeah, because I pulled it out, turned everything on, put it back in. So put my fuse in and it stays on. Strange. There we go. I had it hooked up to the switch around. That's good because I'm not getting anything. Tyler, did you just come on? Uh, no, yeah, I'm about to plug it in right now. I'm going to see what happens.
All right, well, I got 24 volts going to the light when I push the button, so. Bad lights? I didn't have a bad light or I didn't hook it up right. I'm going to open it up and look at it. But Anyway, that's all we're doing today. Um, if you got yours working, you can take off. Or you can hang out with me till I figure out what the hell's going on. Totally up to you. I kind of want to see what's wrong with yours. Huh? Well, I kind of want to see what's wrong with yours. I'm sure it's going to be something embarrassing when I figure it out. Yeah. Did you say yeah? <laughs> this is going to be a long summer, isn't it, Garrett? Long eight weeks. No, it'll be good. We're going to have some fun. We haven't blown anything up yet. That's good. That's always good. Yeah. Let's see, see what happens in the plugger. Yeah. Okay. What is the deal with that? Okay, never mind, never mind. I'll figure it out. I unplugged it and the lights were still on. That's scary. Yeah, it's because the power supply was like slowing down, I guess. You want us to leave everything on the protocol board or dismantle it? No, you can leave it how it is. Okay. What'd you do wrong? I don't look like anything. Oh. So I got nothing there. Oh, because I got a freaking fuse out. Shit. Let me find it. Oh, God. I got plus 24 and I got nothing happening. I'm going to try one of the other lights. I got a bad light. Which sucks. Where is my...
going on? I'm not sure it's working. There we go. There we go. Something right? It was uh one of my negative jumpers wasn't in very good. I just gotta go through and fix those. What are you guys doing the rest of the day? Going to work. Working on a roof again? No, I don't know what I'm doing this time. Probably just trim painting. It's working on flipping houses. You like what you do? Yeah. So far. There's some stuff I don't like, but for the most part, I like it. What gauge wire do you think would work best with these proto boards? It's a little lead wire. It's like 22 gauge.
Maybe what we'll do is maybe next week sometime I'll give you guys a reel of it. I gotta go back to the school and get a bunch of red. Okay. I'm going down to get my books tomorrow. Do you think you can meet me then? If not, I don't care. Um, tomorrow? Oh, let me see. I'm just trying to remember if we such a pain in the butt to get signed in and get permission to go into the building. I hate to have it all set up, go in there and find out that we don't have any more red. I'm almost out of the stuff that I have here in my garage, so. Yeah. But yeah, I could, yeah. Why don't I do that? I'll give you, we'll just, we won't, I won't be able to give everybody red because, um, yeah. And I really like using red for control wiring. It's just a good habit to get into, but I really don't want to deal with cutting strands in half all summer long. So why don't we do that? Can you, Tyler, you think you could meet me at the school tomorrow morning? Yeah, hell yeah. Why don't we say, why don't we say um, nine o'clock? All right. Can you guys do that? Good me. Yep. All right. I'll bring you guys a wire tomorrow at nine o'clock. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yep. I guess I got test this bad boy out for you. What's the story on these switches? It's like the top or two sides of them are always connected and then the switch only works diagonally across the switch. I don't know. This is the first time I've used them, but I made the same mistake you did. Um, yeah, and they just stayed on. Yeah, I'm not really. Um, look at that right now. I'll figure these bad boys out right now. So what it seems like to me is this the two that are closer together are what makes when you push the button. So I'm going to test that out. Yeah, it's like the each side. Which originally I thought it would be like this and this would make. That's how I yeah. had it up at first. Yeah. And then I'm assuming the other side is the same way. Okay, 
Okay, so those two are common to each other. Which is why yours turned on right away. Yeah. So on these things, these two are normally open and these two are normally open. And then the other ones that aren't, they're not normally closed. They're just like continuous. You can't open them. Right, they're common to each other. That's so, so on this side, these are always on the same potential. So if I hook it up to, you know, if I'm on this side, these two will both make, it doesn't matter which side I'm on. About these little guys that are in the kit that spin around, could that be like a dimmer switch? This? This? Yeah. It's a potentiometer. So okay, yeah. I knew it like had a thermal switch. 50,000 ohms. Did you guys go over how these things work in like 131 or 132? Yeah. Yep. So you should get 50,000 ohms between these two. Fifty-one, And then this is the wiper that changes, changes resistance. Yep, that's a potentiometer. Uh, it's just constantly dim. It doesn't change the brightness of the light. Probably because it's an LED, right? Yeah, it's LED in solid state, so it's only going to work off of a certain voltage. It is constantly dim though. What is? The, if I hook yep. up the potentiometer in the circuit instead of the switch, it's just constantly dim. Well, there, yeah, so this thing's taken, this thing's then a voltage divider, right? So you're, you're, you're losing some kind of voltage between here and the um, LED. So right. you're, you're not getting, even when you have it down to like three ohms. Mm -hmm. All right. 